Well, we're going to move right into the, uh, the next portion, which are machine shivs, uh, drive shivs. <clears throat> we're going to very briefly cover some of the different types of uh, grooves on drive shivs. <coughs> going to talk a little bit about the single wrap traction and double wrap traction, uh, shiv materials and regroovable uh, drive shivs. Very often as a, uh, as a jobber in the industry, we see many different manufacturers' blueprints. And uh, the, uh, this is a very typical print or a cut of a print from a... Uh, I uh, believe this, this may be a Westinghouse machine, what have you, or possibly a notice machine. Uh, the reason why I put this up is to, is to illustrate the way this particular casting, or the way castings are manufactured, and the way that they are made. Up in this area, you'll notice many different dimensions, but you, you can also see that there is a, a taper up in this section right here. If you follow my pen, You'll see right across here is there, there's never a straight portion underneath the rope groove seats. There's always a taper. And to understand why there's a taper, you have to realize the way parts are cast. If you've ever been to the beach and played with the sand with your kids and tried to make something, very often you use a pail, and a pail has a taper or a cup has a taper to it. Well, it's the same thing when we go to a foundry and we ask them to cast a part. In order for them to cast a part, they have to go in with an impression or a mold Actually, it's called a pattern. And that pattern is placed in sand and pushed down in the sand to, to form an impression. Now, once it's pushed down in the sand, it has to be released. And the only way it can be released is by putting an angle or a taper. And uh, in foundry terms, they call it draft, a certain draft, in order to remove that pattern. All of the different types of shivs that this industry uses all have a taper or a draft to them on all the cast surfaces. So it's very important that you realize that whenever you're checking to see whether or not you have sufficient material for regrooving or you're going to check material all around, bear in mind that the way these parts are manufactured uh, is with a taper to them. And it, it just also tells us that never really do you find that all wheels are round in this industry mostly the cast por portions of it could be running out or oblong. When we put them up on a machine tool, on a lathe, on an engine lathe, and we start machining them all around, we make them round. But there are a lot of areas that are uh, untouched by the, by, the, uh, by the tools. Okay? Well, I put it up there for a reason now. Very often we're asked about regroovings. When can you regroove a shiv and when you cannot? So I'm going to start it by showing some different types of grooves first so that you can, you can follow where these grooves all came from. When this industry f first started, uh, probably the winding drum was the most common machine that was used. And the winding drum used, it, used a, a round groove, just a U groove, we often call it, uh, just to sort of support that, that cable. Well, certainly when we start evolving uh, the uh, the traction drives, we started using a V-groove. V-groove in its time was, was very successful. It did a, a wonderful job in, in, in transmitting power and, doing, um, and, and being able to produce elevator machines in buildings so that they'll go a, a higher rise. Uh, some of the problems that are associated after a while with the fact that we used a V-groove is the fact that we use a very small area of the cable and a very small area of the shiv in order to pinch and to grab to provide that, that, uh, that motion or that traction. What happens after a while is the material deteriorates. Certainly the cable deteriorates and certainly the shiv deteriorates. Um, if you take a look a little bit further down, and I'll move this just like this, you'll notice that now manufacturers probably in the last 40, 50 years use what we call an undercut groove which is a variation of a U-groove and a V-groove somewhat. If you notice, we have the same shape which supports the, the cable in one area, here and here, and then underneath it, we undercut it so as to pinch the cable and to provide traction. 
Certainly it doesn't provide as much traction as a V-groove, but it also gives you much more cable life and groove life. And it, we also no, call this a safety groove because when the machine is not, uh, or the elevator is not being used uh, or has a problem, should the car go uh, up into the overhead or the uh, weights go down into the, uh, into the pit or whatever, uh, or get bottomed, this particular type of groove will actually do some slipping, whereas a V-groove may not. V-groove has that constant pressure on it and will tend to grab and keep pulling either the weights of the car, whereas this particular style groove would, would operate much more safely. So we call this a tighten the safety groove, okay? Now, knowing a little bit about these different types of grooves, the only way the uh, traction machines work successfully is by having that pinching action. And in time, uh, as these things, or as these grooves wear down, certainly we, st we, we have another term we use again, that same term, bottoming. You start bottoming the cable down on the bottom. You start losing traction. You get some slippage. That slippage could also be a contributing factor to lost motion. Uh, even though it may not appear to be, uh, you take some extreme situations like a single speed AC machine, it relies a lot on, on traction in order to operate and to uh, do somewhat, some kind of leveling. Should you have some slippage, certainly is going to affect it, and it's going to affect the, the, the feeling and sensation in the car with lost motion. Okay.